Admiral James Chen stood on the bridge of the U.S. Indomitable, his weathered face illuminated by the soft glow of holographic displays. The massive dreadnought, pride of the United Earth Fleet, hung in high orbit above the azure world of Novus Prime. Chen's dark eyes scanned the tactical readouts, a grim smile playing at the corners of his mouth. Status report he barked, his voice carrying the weight of four decades of military service. Lieutenant Commander Sarah Rodriguez, his exo, stepped forward. Sir, the Arkshire Battle Fleet has just dropped out of FTL at the edge of the system. Long-range scans confirm 47 capital ships and over 200 support craft. They're advancing in a standard Arkshire Formation Gamma 7, if I'm not mistaken. Chen nodded, unsurprised. The Arkshire, a militant species that had carved out a sizable empire in the Orion Arm, were known for their rigid adherence to doctrine. It made them predictable and our forces Chen inquired, already knowing the answer but needing to hear it aloud. We're badly outnumbered, Sir Rodriguez replied, her voice steady despite the gravity of the situation. We have the Indomitable, plus twelve frigates and six destroyers in system. The colony has a token planetary defense force, but nothing that could stand up to a determined orbital assault. Chen allowed himself a low chuckle, drawing curious glances from the bridge crew. Outnumbered, perhaps he mused, but far from outmatched. Signal all ships execute Operation Thermopylae. As Rodriguez relayed the orders, Chen's mind drifted back to the classified briefing he'd received months ago. Earth's top xenobiologists and military strategists had spent years studying the Arkshire, piecing together an understanding of their psychology and tactics from a handful of border skirmishes and intercepted communications. The Arkshire, they discovered, were the product of millions of years of evolution as apex predators on a harsh world. They were physically imposing, with natural armor and razor-sharp claws. Their entire society was built around strict hierarchies and unwavering obedience to superiors. In battle, they relied on overwhelming force and rigid formations, expecting their sheer strength and numbers to crush any opposition. But humans. Humans were different. Tempered by millennia of conflict amongst themselves, humanity had elevated warfare to an art form. They had learned to adapt, to innovate, to find victory even when outnumbered and outgunned. And now, facing an alien threat that threatened their very existence, they would put those hard-won lessons to the ultimate test. The plan was audacious, even by human standards. As the Arkshire fleet approached, the U.S. ships scattered, taking up seemingly random positions throughout the system. To the Arkshire, it must have looked like panic prey fleeing before the approach of the Predator. Chen allowed himself a grim smile as he watched the enemy fleet's formation begin to break up, individual ship captains unable to resist the temptation of easy kills. It was all going according to plan. Sir Rodriguez called out, The Ark Sir Vanguard has taken the bait. They're splitting up to chase our frigates. Chen nodded. Excellent. Signal the Hermes and the Ares they have a green light for Phase 2. Aboard the frigate U.S. Hermes, Captain Michael O. Orarian felt a surge of adrenaline as the orders came through. His ship, along with its sister vessel Ares, had been specially modified for this operation. On were the typical energy weapons and missile launchers. In their place were banks of electronic warfare suites and gravity manipulators, unlike anything ever fielded in combat. All hands, brace for high-G maneuvers O. Arian ordered, strapping himself into the command chair. Helm, execute attack pattern Delta-9. Weapons, prepare to deploy the cherry disc device on my mark. The Hermes's engines flared to life, the small ship nimbly dodging incoming fire as it closed with the nearest Arkshire cruiser. At the last possible moment, O. Ariane gave the command. Mark. A pulse of gravimetric energy erupted from the Hermes, engulfing the alien vessel. The Arkshire ship's shields flickered and died, overloaded by the sudden shift in local space-time. But that was just the beginning. Alarms blared on the Arkshire bridge as system after system went dark. Artificial gravity failed, sending crew members tumbling. Weapon capacitors drained to nothing. Even emergency life support sputtered and died. The Charybdis device, named after the mythological whirlpool, was the product of humanity's finest minds. It created a localized field of twisted space-time that played havoc with the laws of physics. Against the Arkshire's energy-hungry technology, it was devastatingly effective across the system. Similar scenes played out as Earth's frigates darted in and out of the scattered Arkshire formation, leaving crippled warships in their wake. The aliens' rigid command structure began to crumble as ship after ship went dark, 
unable to receive orders or even cry out for help. Back on the Indomitable, Admiral Chen watched with grim satisfaction as the tactical display updated in real time. The Arkshire fleet, once an imposing armada, was now a chaotic mess of individually floundering ships. Sir Rodriguez reported, a note of awe in her voice, we're detecting signs of panic in the enemy fleet. Several ships are attempting to flee the system, while others are firing blindly into space. Chen nodded. It was time for the killing blow. Signal all destroyers, he ordered. Commence Operation Leonidas. The six human destroyers, which had been hiding in the shadow of Novus Prime's largest moon, now sprang into action. Unlike the frigates, these ships were armed to the teeth with conventional weaponry. They tore into the disorganized Arkshire fleet like wolves among sheep, their pinpoint accurate fire finding weak spots in armor and exploiting gaps in formation. Chen watched the slaughter with a mix of pride and sadness. The Arkshire were worthy opponents in their own way, but they had never faced an enemy like humanity. Millions of years as apex predators had left them unable to adapt, to think outside their rigid doctrines. Humanity, with its long and bloody history, had learned those lessons the hard way. As the last Arkshire ship fell silent, its reactor going critical in a brilliant flash of light, Chen allowed himself a moment of reflection. This victory would buy humanity time to prepare, to build up their forces, to push back against the alien tide that threatened to engulf them. But Chen harbored no illusions. This was just the beginning. The Arkshire would be back, and next time they would be ready. They would adapt, as all successful species must. In the end, that was the true strength of humanity. Not their technology, not their tactics, but their ability to learn, to grow, to become something more than they were. It was what had carried them from mud huts to the stars, and it was what would see them through the trials to come. Admiral Rodriguez's voice broke through his reverie. We're receiving transmissions from Novus Prime. There. They're cheering, sir. Chen allowed himself a small smile. Patch it through to the main speakers, Lieutenant Commander. The crew deserves to hear this. As the sounds of celebration filled the bridge, Chen's thoughts turned to the future. There would be more battles, more sacrifices. But for now, humanity had proven itself equal to the challenge. They had taken their ancient art of warfare and used it to carve out a place among the stars. Let the galaxy tremble, Chen thought. Humanity had arrived, and they were here to stay. In the months and years that followed the Battle of Novus Prime, the legend of Admiral James Chen and his audacious victory grew. It became a rallying cry for humanity as they pushed back against the Arkshire, a reminder that ingenuity and adaptability could overcome even the most daunting odds. The Arkshire, true to Chen's predictions, did not take their defeat lightly. They returned with larger fleets, new technologies, and tactics clearly inspired by their human opponents. But each time humanity was ready, always one step ahead, always with a new trick up their sleeve. The war raged across dozens of star systems, a titanic struggle that would shape the fate of the galaxy. Other alien races long cowed by Arxur might, watched in awe as the upstart humans bloodied the nose of the supposed invincible predators time and time again. Five years after Novus Prime, Admiral Chen found himself standing on the bridge of a new flagship, the U.S. Thermopylae. Beside him stood Michael O'Arian, the young frigate captain now promoted to rear admiral. Hard to believe how far we've come, O'Rean mused, gazing out at the vast armada assembled before them. Ships of a dozen alien races flew alongside human vessels, a coalition forged in the fires of war. Chen nodded, a familiar grim smile on his face. We've done well, but the real test is still to come. The Arkshire have called up every ship, every warrior. This will be their final push. Oh, how Arian's eyes hardened. Let them come. We've got a few surprises waiting for them. As if on cue, a junior officer approached with a data pad. Sirs, the latest intelligence report from deep cover assets in Arkshur space. You'll want to see this. Chen scanned the report, his eyebrows rising. Well, well, he murmured. It seems our old friends have been busy. New ship designs, energy weapons we've never seen before. They're learning. Oh, Orion frowned. Is this going to be a problem, sir? Chen's smile widened, a predatory gleam in his eye. Oh no, son, this is an opportunity. The Arkshire are finally starting to think like us, to innovate. And that means they're playing our game now. 
He turned to the communications officer. Get me a secure line to fleet command. It's time to activate Project Odysseus. As the officer hurried to comply, Chen turned back to the viewport, gazing out at the sea of stars that had become humanity's new battleground. The Arxur were adapting, yes, but so were humans. It's what they did best. Let the enemy come with their new ships and new weapons. Humanity would be ready, as they always were. For they had long ago mastered the true art of warfare, the art of thinking the unthinkable, of doing the impossible. The final battle loomed, and with it, the fate of the galaxy hung in the balance. But Admiral James Chen was not afraid. He was human, after all, and humans had been preparing for this moment for thousands of years. The stars themselves would bear witness to what humanity could do, 